सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली जीरो टॉलरेंस फॉर टेररिज्म क्रॉस बॉर्डर टेरर नो कंट्री विल बी अलाउड टू हार्बर टेररिस्ट If another country is harboring terrorists, we reserve the right to take unilateral action against them, etc., etc., etc. Which country's prime minister, home minister, and National Security Council is saying all this? Let me tell you a bit more. The prime minister tweets a decision taken at the National Security Council meeting, and that decision is that there will there will be zero tolerance for any terrorism. any terrorists peace is non negotiable which means in the terms of peace you can't ask for concessions and then the statement of the national security council released to the media goes on to say and i quote no country will be allowed to provide sanctuaries and facilitation to terrorists and we i'm eating up a bird and deliberately and we reserve all rights in that respect to safeguard our people now you see all these statements usually usually you would say you were used to hearing these statements from government of india because what is our problem in many parts of the country it is cross border terrorism it is also the fact that these terrorists are being harbored supported fed clothed armed provided resources by a neighboring country these are lines that we've got used to hearing from our own leaders india's own leaders and those lines always almost always i was about to say but actually always pertain to pakistan that pakistan it is which is harboring terrorist striking india that we have zero tolerance that we reserve the right to strike inside pakistan etc 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 the fact is you might call it irony and i would say avoid shaden freud and i will in conclusion give you one minute of opinion and tell you why avoid shorten freud all these statements have come from pakistan so the it's the prime minister of pakistan shahbaz sharif who has tweeted his national security council's resolve it is the pakistani home minister or minister of interior as as as, as they say there rana sanaulla who's nearly threatened his neighbor now which neighbor are they talking about again a conventional wisdom would be ah they're talking about india the fact is they are not talking about india because if they were talking about india there will be no story at all it will be business as usual they are talking about a country which they consider to be among their closest friends a country which they boasted of having liberated not long ago liberated from who liberated from americans who were also their stalwart allies or who called them stalwart allies but that's a different story but afghan The, the 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 return of the taliban in afghanistan was seen as a huge huge success story by the pakistani military intelligence political establishment in fact even imran khan then the prime minister such as he might be but he was the prime minister at that point he said that this was liberation of afghanistan so all these all these harsh lines and words and threats are being used for the taliban administration in pakistan and in return what are the taliban doing the taliban ministry of defense as it is called if if you accept that description they have said look the pakistani should stop threatening us in any case all the all the strongholds of the pakistani terrorists are in pakistani territory not in our territory and why is it that the pakistanis are so angry why are they responding like this because look at the data look at the data data tells you that in november pakistani taliban that is tehreek e taliban pakistan they withdrew from the cease fire in june some kind of a cease fire was brokered again brokered by the afghan taliban that cease fire broke in june apparently because from what i read in academic publications also in a long article by daud khatak on rfrl which is radio free europe radio liberty 
Daud Khatak is among the best informed journalists on these issues in that region. I read that and I read some writings in international publications and they tell me that one reason the ceasefire did not sustain was that both sides took advantage of it, particularly the Pakistani establishment because they were stronger. So, so all of a sudden, one after the other, many TTP leaders, Tehreek Taliban Pakistan leaders began to die, a bit like the Russian oligarchs, right, uh, with, no real, with, with no real explanation, but everybody knew the reason. Also, there were sizable Pakistani attacks carried out inside Afghan territory at TTP stronghold. So TTP responded, they withdrew from the ceasefire and attacks started again. So in the month of November, nearly 60 attacks started. In the month of December, in the first 15 days of December, another 40 attacks had taken place. And in fact, if you look at the last few days and last maybe last three weeks, a lot of these attacks have come up. So just a couple of days back, in fact, just as the just as the year was turning, we saw this picture. See the picture. This is the new Pakistani Army Chief General Asim Munir and the Pakistani Commander of Joint Chiefs of Staff Committee. That is General Sahir Shamshad Mirza. You can see them carrying the body of a Pakistani officer who's just been killed in an IED explosion in Balochistan. So while while Tehreek-e Taliban Pakistan has been active, they've carried out attacks in. Fata in frontier areas and in KPK, Khyber, Pakhtunkhwa, but also sometimes straying into the Baluchistan area where Baluch groups are active in many cases. So this particular attack was carried out, has been claimed by BLA or what is called as Baluch Liberation Army and they've carried out so neatly that they've been, they've been present close enough to make a fairly clear, in fact a very clear video of this bombing. Uh, so in these videos shared on their telegram channels and I'm sharing one with you, you might see a couple of seconds or five seconds or 10 seconds on my screen, but I'm sharing the whole link with you in the description. You can see a convoy coming in and the front vehicle in the convoy gets blown up on an IED. That, that vehicle led to the death of Captain Fahad Khan, the young Pakistani officer and five others. So it is the funeral of young Captain Fahad Khan, that the new army chief and his equally new commander of Joint Chiefs of Staff Committee are attending. So that is a reminder to Pakistan as the, as the year begins that things are looking very bad. This attack was carried out in a village called Kahan in Kolu district of Baluchistan. Not long ago, we saw 25 Tariq Taliban Pakistan TTP terrorists killed in an army raid in which five security forces personnel died, including two members of the Pakistani elite special services group commandos. What had happened in this case? In this case, these TTP people, they were in an interrogation center in Baluchistan, an interrogation center run by the counter-terrorism forces of Pakistan government. They, they overpowered their interrogators. They overpowered their interrogators. They took them hostage and then they said we are willing to negotiate. So in the course of time, Pakistani armed forces, especially special forces, assaulted the place. One hostage died. 25 of these TTP terrorists died. Seven surrendered and five Pakistani uniformed personnel also died. This incident happened in KPK in the city of Bannu, which otherwise was considered relatively safe because it's not that close to the border between Pakistan and Afghanistan. Now I'm sharing with you this article by Daud Khatak. So see, see the front page of the article and see the picture there. The man to the left, the man in shades, very stylish shades, that is Noor Wali Mehsood. Noor, Noor Wali Mehsood is today the chief of TTP. You might remember that we had once done an entire episode of Karta Clutter on the Mehsood family and the leadership of TTP. I'll share a link with you. I'm not repeating that. So he's sitting there. These are the people who've now been leading this operation since the ceasefire ended. And what happened after the ceasefire ended? Because the new ceasefire was ending, they were the ones who were front running that process at that point. So they got enough of their own people into the Pakistani controlled territory with weapons to operate. And 
at the same time they have their sanctuaries in afghanistan as well and at this point there isn't that much love lost between the taliban government and pakistan because what the taliban have done is like all other rulers of afghanistan they've also not recognized the durand line they've also breached it they've even breached the half billion dollar fence that the pakistanis have built on this durand line because they don't re- don't recognize these borders and you've seen this sort of i won't say funny i won't say weird you've seen this sort of unusual videos where you see taliban soldiers going towards the border and somebody asks them are you going to pakistan one of them says no why should we go to pakistan we don't want to take over that country because if we take uh, take over that country we will have to repay its debts so one thing the afghans don't lack is a sense of humor once again i'll share with you a tweet so just as an example of taliban humor or afghan humor or dark humor as the afghans or the taliban have a joke at pakistan's expense so ahmed yasir street is in pashto and my colleague sajid ali mir has translated this this for me you will see the full translation on my screen but basically it says that look at yourselves pakistanis you are not turkey and we are not syrian kurds which means turkey keeps on carrying carrying out attacks on syrian kurds at will so you are not turkey we are not syrian kurds this is proud afghanistan this is the this is the graveyard of many empires and if you were to indulge in a misadventure you may end up in one more surrender ceremony like this one and he uses that famous surrender picture of 1971 general niyazi surrendering surrendering to general jagjit singh aurora now besides the incidents i talk of talked about i will tell you about some other prominent incidents and i will then give you the larger numbers so december 18 on december 18 at banu the same city where that counter terrorism center incident took place in an ambush four cops were killed and four were wounded this was this was an attack on a bus again <coughs> again in the same area a police patrol was ambushed six were killed six policemen were killed then in baluchistan in an attack four were killed 26 were wounded as a suicide bomber attacked a police truck now what's happened is that the major offensive that the pakistanis carried out against ttp etc in 2014 called zarbe azm zarbe azm means actually a, a big a big effective strike but azm is also the name of the holy prophet's sword so that offensive was taken out it was a very nasty offensive in which the pakistanis used a lot of air power quite freely and it was in that process that a lot of people left their families and resentment grew even more and the pakistanis are still paying for it so the afghans are having fun with some dark humor pakistanis are angry but the fact is there is trouble in pakistan's backyard now it's for the pakistanis to decide whether it's the backyard or the front yard but i will come to that in conclusion of this episode pakistan's own national counter terror authority in a report to the senate expressed grave concern at what's going on and again i pick up a quote from asfandiar mir who's an expert at us institute of peace in washington who says and i quote in 2022 the ttp mounted increasing number of attacks expanded the geographies of all activities and showed considerable political cohesion that's important considerable po- political cohesion all the while enjoying political asylum and haven from the government of taliban and then he goes on to conclude and i quote again this position the ttp to pose a major long term cross border challenge to pakistan so cross border terror so once again it's coming back and hitting the pakistanis now while the ceasefire talks were going on it looked like the pakistani establishment and the army were quite desperate to get a deal from the taliban so look at the kind of concessions that they they're supposed to have already made it got stuck over a couple of things that i tell you so these concessions were was that they will they will they will release all of the arrested ttp terrorists second they will allow them to impose sharia in many areas there was a dispute about how big would these areas be which will be excluded where would democratic reform sustain where would they yield to sharia law so that was still being argued but certainly in a number of areas or in a negotiable area pakistani establishment had agreed to withdraw all democratic reforms and let sharia law prevail under 
TTP. Then TTP people or leaders and, and fighters or terrorists were to be allowed to come back with their weapons. That was a sticking point, but it did look like that the Pakistani authorities were more or less ready for that. And then, then the trickiest of all, that Pakistani army would withdraw most of its troops from the region. Now that caused a lot of alarm among the population there and that led to protests as a result of which it looks like the Pakistani side also got cold feet and meanwhile the Taliban, TTP, the Pakistani Taliban were getting irritated and concerned because they thought the Pakistani side was using this ceasefire to take out some of their key leaders and also attack their strongholds, their thikanas inside Afghan territory. Now see what's been happening in Pakistan. Look at the state of terror in Pakistan right now. I have the data for you for the year 2022. And this data is from the Center for Research and Security Studies, CRSS, and we are also taking the graphics from there. So thank you very much, researchers at CRSS. So look at the first graphic. Look at the first graphic and it's quite telltale. It tells you 282 security men have been killed in 2022. 40 in December alone, right? That's a lot of uniformed people killed. 376 terror attacks have taken place. Then they've also given, see the table, state-wise breakup. So Balochistan, 110 attacks, 254 killed. 254 of all kinds, that is soldiers, police, civilians, terrorists, insurgents, everybody. 110 attacks, 254 killed. Then in Fata, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, 309 attacks, 348 killed, right? It's a lot of people killed, but again, all, not just soldiers. Then you come to, then you come to Punjab. Punjab in Pakistan usually is safe, but still 25 attacks, 28 persons killed. Sindh, 54 attacks, 56 killed. I suspect some of this will be in the city of Karachi because Pakistan's biggest city is there. If you look at the total casualties in the year, it's 1714, 1714, total attacks 506, total fatalities 973 in all these attacks. This is all part of the CRSS's annual security report. Once again, you see the chart, the final chart. This tells you that between 2021 and 2022, there's been a 15% increase in terror attacks. Now, if 2021 was a very calm year, you would say, okay, 15% is not too bad. But 2021 also was a very active year for terror attacks in Pakistan. A 15% increase over that looks quite bad now, which takes us back to something we started with. We talked about Pakistan's backyard and Pakistan, then the option being with Pakistan to decide what's its backyard, what's its front yard. All this while, and this is opinion now, all this while, the Pakistanis thought that their front yard was India. So rare terrorists there, they will only strike India. But you know what happens in the process? What happens in the process is that your establishment acquires a terrorism mindset. So the Pakistani establishment in the course of time has got addicted to terrorism. And, 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 and terror groups that they encouraged and they allowed to prosper under their watch they are the ones they are the ones who are striking back at them and that's where we bring back hillary clinton's famous immortal warning to the pakistanis in 2011 she said this in islamabad in a joint press conference with the pakistani counterpart at that point then foreign minister hina rabani khar and she said i quote exactly from her and i quote you can't keep snakes in your backyard and expect them only to bite your neighbors you know eventually those snakes are going to turn on whoever has them on the backyard and then she goes on to say quite recently i am warning if we don't handle these safe havens together the consequences could be drastic for both of us this was 21st october 2011. So once again, see what's happening in Pakistan. And the reason I said early on that there is no scope for schadenfreude because, you know, human beings are dying. The fact is that you can't say, oh, Serbs of Pakistan is right. They reared snakes in their front yard and backyard, right? 
snakes in their backyard are now coming and striking them, etc., etc., right? While snakes in the front yard are a little bit calmer because India has been using the right to retaliate and so on and so forth. You can get into a celebratory, celebratory mindset. But that is what is avoidable because terrorism is cross-border terrorism is a very nasty phenomenon because you know there's an issue with snakes particularly bad snakes bad snakes it's very difficult to stop them you can build fences you can put guards but snakes are slithery snakes work at night they can dig holes under your fences and come to your side they can also crawl over your fences and come in so everybody's interest lies in this case in a neighbor being able to control all its snakes and also taking that one holy dip wherever they choose to take, take it and say that we are no longer addicted to terrorism.